Welcome to Who Are These Startups? Podcast shorts featuring founder interviews of Canadian startups. Hey, it's a startup coach. I'm down at Collision and I ran into my good friend, Will Greenblatt of Out Loud Speaker School. Hey, buddy. Why don't you introduce yourself and what you do at Out Loud Speaker School and then we'll talk about Collision. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm a former actor. I call myself a recovering child actor. Not because anything crazy happened, just I quit. Uh, but I, me being a child actor growing up meant that I was always performing to get people to like me. And so slowly through my path of quitting acting and becoming a teacher abroad, first in Spain and then in China, where I co-founded my first startup, I slowly realized that if I could use my performance skills but be more authentic and honest about who I was, I could make better connections with people and ultimately become a better speaker and communicator. And then I became a public speaking coach and now I run Out Loud Speaker School. Uh, and we run uh, workshops for startup founders and accelerators and entrepreneurs to help them become better speakers and tell their story with confidence and clarity. And I'm going to ask you again at the end, but if people are interested in that, where do they go? Uh, they can go my, to my LinkedIn, uh, at Will Greenblatt, uh, or outloudnow.com. So you're down here at Collision. I'm sure you watched a few of the pitch competitions, and I'm sure you're talking to some of the startups at the startup booths that are around. Yeah. One, what have you seen that you really like? And then we'll get into what advice do you have for people that you in a crowded environment like this to get people's attention. That's such a good question. I think from what I've liked so far, I just want to give an honorable mention to Ishan Kohli. I think I hope I'm pronouncing his last name properly, but he's from Sky Acres Technology. Zafia Laplante is his co-founder. I saw Ishan pitch yesterday, and I had seen him at Elevate last time, and the, the, the steps he's made, how much he's improved. It was just so great to see a founder working on their pitch as a craft, as a skill. And he just came across so credible. The story was clear, the slides were clean, the, the graphics were great. So just having a really simple pitch, delivering it with, again, both authenticity, but also some power in your voice, some energy and some enthusiasm. He handled the Q&A really well. So I think making sure your slides are super clean and simple, your words are super clean and simple, the ideas are clean and simple, and your Q&A is really involved and you're showing your authentic self is really, really important. Um, and in terms of tips for people making the most out of something like this in the loud environment, the first tip is like, realize how fucking exhausting this is. It's three days, four if you go to the thing uh, on, on opening, opening day, night. yeah. And it's potentially hours on your feet, talking to new people, context switching between different conversations, trying to remember who the fuck you are and what your name is. So that requires, A, it requires stamina, but B, it requires pacing yourself. So I think the more you go to events like Startup Drinks for you that you run and uh, TechTO is another one and the more you get out there and practice networking the better but also like take care of yourself. Go sit down when you need to. It's okay to recharge. You're not a lazy piece of shit as that's what my brain tells me when I go to sit down but I'm like no I'm allowed to rest and in fact it's better if I do. Uh, so yeah pacing yourself and then when you do talk to someone really try to find the human being behind this like potential lead or prospect or investor. Like, who are they? Is there a personal detail you can tap into? Can you talk about some family members? Can you just make a joke? Can you do that? Once you do that, it kind of peels off this layer of like, you want something from me and maybe I'll give it to you. And you just kind of become two human beings talking. And it's so much better to do it that way because then you're just like, oh, well, what are you looking for again? Oh, you want to meet an investor? I'm an investor. Or like, people are just so much more willing to do something for, for you or with you when you've had that human moment. Um, so try to just do that and it's better anyways and then even if nothing comes from it you get to walk away being like oh that, that person was nice and that was nice yeah just about an hour ago I connected uh, somebody here with the founder of Grok who was speaking in the press conference over here because they had stuff going on and yeah it's just I didn't want anything I'm just like oh you know let's make that happen yeah. because I could make that happen yes <laughs> providing also providing value yeah. one thing I've been doing which I find people respond to really well is I go who are you looking to meet here yeah and they go oh and I'm like, yeah, I'll send them your way if I meet anyone like that. And then they're like, oh, that's awesome. And now I may meet somebody who fits that criteria. I may not. But even just the offer and then, you know, it's a real intention. I do want to do it. Is means so much to people. It's like I'm, I'm trying to help you out. And, yeah, I really don't want anything from that. It takes two seconds for me, but it means a lot to them, you know. I'm going to throw some random curveballs at you. Yeah. But you, we're here at Collision. You know, people can listen to us. It's loud. There's people walking around all the time. If you're at one of these startup booths, yeah. you got any advice about getting someone's attention and, and keeping it for the minute you have it? Yeah. Um, I mean, you can do, like, the cheesy thing where you're like, you know those people that are trying to get you to donate to yeah, some yeah. cause on the street? And they go, hey, can I tell you the joke of the day? 
That works. To be honest, I want to hear the joke of the day. It's, uh, that's better than, hey, do you have a minute to talk about, you know, whatever? And I'm like, no, fuck off, you know. But when somebody's like, hey, do you want to hear the joke of the day? I do. <laughs> so I'll stop. Uh, so you can, you can do a gimmick. But I think in general, like, making clear eye contact with somebody, smiling at them, introducing them, asking honestly how they're doing, like you can care about the answer, that goes a long way as well. Um, and you can also ask them a qualifying question. This really helps. So, are you interested in blah, blah, blah? Or are you from a company like such and such? Or are you the kind of person who blah, blah, blah? Just a quick, like almost like you would in a survey letter. Are you this kind of person that I'm trying to meet? Yeah. And are you the kind of person who might give a shit about this? Yeah. And then if they're not, then you go, oh, well, I can tell you about our pitch or whatever. But, but you, you, know, you know that they're just kind of poking around, a tire kicker, so to speak. Again, you can still have the human connection. But if they are from your target market, then ideally you know their problems, you know their pain points, and you can speak to those right away and say, well, you probably struggle a lot with this. A lot of people we talk to in your position do and it feels like this and it sucks, this part sucks and you know, talking about people's pain and problems in their own language, in their own words, is the best way to get their attention in my, in my experience. And if you're on stage here, there's a bunch of different pitching areas and you know, you got, you're pitching about 50 people but there's thousands of people around or maybe 100 people and there's noise everywhere. Yeah. Any uh, advice on one, getting their attention and keeping their attention for three to five minutes? Yes, just be, lo be louder, slower, clearer, and more expressive than you think. I would say slower is a tough one because some, you know, there's time, like you only have three minutes to pitch. So if you can't be slower, then be louder, be clearer, like, you know, more enunciative, enunci enunciate more, uh, and be more expressive in your voice and in your face and your body and your hands. Just those three things will like elevate your, what I call the speech settings. They'll elevate those and then all of a sudden people are like, oh, who's that? They, 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 they sound like they got energy and passion and they'll just kind of stop and listen to you rather than being like, yeah, this is my company, we're really excited to, and you just lose, you lose their attention. And what do you think is the biggest mistake you've seen someone pitching here this uh, week? Ooh, biggest mistake, there's a few. Um, not, Looking at the audience in the eyes at all is no good. You want to make a connection with the audience. Turning your back on the audience when the investors start asking you the Q&A questions. Um, ending with, uh, that's it, is really bad. <laughs> you should end with a, a statement that is both a call to action and kind of reiterates your vision statement or the prize of your company. So, you know, come instead, change the world with us. Exactly. And, and ideally something that also the way you started talking about. So like if you started talking about this single mom, you know, has to drive three hours, you could end by saying, you know, uh, come change the world to make sure single mothers like Brenda doesn't have to drive three hours every day. Something like that that ties in to the first thing you mentioned and the people you're talking about. Yeah. So that's it. at Out Loud Speaker School, you help people, startups pitch, you help uh, People present, find their voice, whether it's sales, whether it's enterprise, whether it's individuals. Who should come and talk to you? So founders who are looking to develop their storytelling and personal branding should come talk to me. Uh, founders that are fundraising and uh, looking to raise money in a shorter period of time should come talk to me to work on their story and their pitch. And then uh, startup accelerator program managers who want to hire me to come in and do that for their uh, company should, and then any uh, business people who want presentation skills and storytelling skills for their, their teams and leaders. I'm uh, partnering with a few things coming up and we'll talk about getting you involved with some of the events happening. Awesome. Where do people go find you? Uh, yeah, LinkedIn is the best, uh, at Will Greenblatt, um, outloudnow.com, and also my newsletter is uh, The Green Blast. I'm trying to reclaim my name that I got made fun of for growing up for years, Greenblatt. Uh, so the Green Blast is my newsletter. You can find that on Beehive. Um, and yeah, the best place uh, is LinkedIn. And I'm starting my new YouTube channel, which I should plug. Um, Your Public Speaking Coach is my YouTube channel. And I'm going to be making content about me trying to figure out YouTube slash entrepreneurship slash fatherhood and then giving everything I know about storytelling and public speaking. I really appreciate you taking the time at a collision. It's busy down here to talk to us. It's way nicer than running around bothering people for networking. Thanks for having me, Craig. This has been Who Are These Startups? Find out more at whoarethesestartups.com 
and check out our live events at torontostarts.com events.